God bless you, church. It's good to be here once again. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's uh, give him the thanks and praise that we've, that we've arrived this morning, whether we're here physically or we're tuning in via the live stream. It's wonderful to be together once again, to see all your smiling faces. So it's just good to be here. I just want um, to read one scripture, it's, and it's one that we know very, very well from the book of Psalms 133. And it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And last night there was a really special event here. I believe it was a landmark for, the, uh, for this ministry. Uh, the ladies came together last night and it was my privilege to be here. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so <laughs> myself and a few others. So, uh, but no, honestly, it was, it was such a really amazing night to see the women of this church and other ladies come that maybe not are a part of this church come together and just all the walls came down, all the barriers came down. There was no, sorry, there was no men with their egos here. Yeah. So it was just lovely. And if I could have been down there worshipping, I would have loved it, but I had to be here. But, but honestly, for, for those that were here, I know you were blessed last night. I see the joy um, in, in the building. The senior pastor gave a fantastic word last night and it was all based from from the senior pastor's experiences over the last 30 years so you could really see that that how God's moved even her on from when she first began up until now and we know that God's going to do even more than we can ever think or imagine so I just want to thank the Lord for the senior pastor's life and for and for all of you here you know I remember Pastor Kiri was speaking about about value a few weeks ago and if we truly know our value if we know how much God loves us and we know what God has done for us, then, then truly we know our value in him, that, that we are God's people and that he's called every single one of us by name. He knows every single hair on our heads. He knows what we do, what we don't do. He knows what makes us tick. And that's the God we serve. We want to serve a, a living God, a God that, that can you know, lead us into paths where maybe we don't want to go, but, but will be with us in it, through it, and, and when we come out the other side. So be blessed this morning if we can rise to our feet we're going to lift up a new song this morning it's called made away and the word even this is a really um it's it's a proclamation and we're thanking god that truly he's made a way and it says when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over yes. you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way because you move mountains and you cause walls to fall with your power perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here only because you made a way. So we just want to give God control this morning. We want to ask him to have his way in our lives, and that we may have not the same experience as what we had yesterday, but that our experience today with God will be new, because, because his blessings are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. So we just want to lift up in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for today, my Lord God. I want to thank you, Lord God, that you've called us, each single person here, and those tuning in live stream, that you've called us, Lord God, that, that we've heard your voice, Lord God, that we've arisen this morning, that we've come marching into your house this morning, Lord God. We just want to thank you, Lord God. We want to thank you for everything that you're doing within our lives, Lord God. And we just thank you that you continually beckon us, Lord God, to come into your house, Lord God, with open hearts and with joy, Lord God, that we may share that amongst other people, Lord God. We thank you for everything that goes on in this ministry, Lord God, for Ladies Night last night, for the boxing club, Lord God, for the football club, the youth club, Lord God, signposts, Lord God, for everything that we do, Lord God, in this ministry, that truly, Lord God, your, your handprint, your thumbprint, Lord God, will be on every single thing, Lord God, that people will look at it and say, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our, in our eyes, Lord God. We just want to give you the thanks and the praise. And we ask that this morning, as we worship, Lord God, as we sit before your feet to hear the word, that, that we'll be open, Lord God, hearts ready, Lord God, to hear what you have to say to us, Lord, Lord God. We just want to thank you for those that oversee us, Lord, Lord God, once again. We want to thank you for our Archbishop. Cover him, bless him, protect him, Lord God, in whatever he says and does for your glory, Lord God. And that we know that you're going to use him again this morning, Lord God, as you do on a daily basis. And we also that you be with him, Lord God, as he shares. And once again, we do want to thank you for our senior pastor, God, who stands here on this pulpit week in, week out, encouraging your body, Lord God, your children, Lord God, to draw closer to you, Lord God. And we know, Lord God, that, that from her testimony last night, Lord God, we can see the true reality of that, Lord God. And we just want to thank you for her life, Lord God, that, that Father, you will enlarge her tents, Lord God, that Father, you will give her more and more, Lord God, and that Father, it will be easy for her because she knows you, Lord God, and, that, and because she trusts in you. 
And we just want to give you the thanks and praise for her life, Lord, for her family, Lord God, and for all of our families here, Lord God, that will come into that unity this morning, that we truly want to seek your face, serve your purpose, Lord God, and just want to love you more and more, Lord God. We just want to give you thanks and praise this morning. As we say together in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Let's lift up praise and worship this morning. You made a way. Goliath, 
and with sand in his take the smooth stone of the Holy Spirit made, you make a way God divide the sea before us let the walls with fall your power, with your power perform miracles there is nothing, there is nothing that's impossible we are standing and we're standing only because you made, you made a way, you made a way, you made a way, you open our eyes, that we may see that there are more for us than against us, you made a way, where there was no way, God, hallelujah, you made a way for Paul and Silas, in the darkness, I don't know how, but you've done it before. You can do it again. I don't know how. Amazing love, amazing grace. You made a way. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know why. When I was lost, you found me. in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Amen. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. He made a way in the wilderness. He made a way through the Red Sea. He's made a way through all the challenges and situations within our lives. And we just want to worship him this morning. Waymaker. Waymaker, 
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. God is going to change someone's life today. Amen. One individual, I pray that he changes all of our lives, but there is one individual this morning that is never going to be the same again because God's power, his miraculous power is moving in this place. And I want to really give God the glory. It was a blessing last night. It was so moving and so beautiful and so sweet. And that was the anointing of God that breaks the yoke. He turned up because he loves women. <laughs> so we give God the glory this morning for who he is, that he's no respecter of people, that he looks upon the heart. So it doesn't matter whether we're male or female this morning, God is in the house and he is going to change someone's life. We want to press through the crowd once again and be that woman that pushed through her thoughts her situation, and kept saying to herself, I just need to touch Jesus. Because touching Jesus is all that matters. God is not concerned where you have been or where you were. He just sees your heart and what he wants to do with you. And he'll make a way where there is no way. We've declared it this morning. We are standing here today only because God made a way. We have all gone through valleys. We all face mountains. We all experience dryness in our lives and chaos and despair. But we have God on our side. There are more angels for us than against us. We just need to believe, church, that God is who he says he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, of those who desire him. We had such a blessing. I can't put it into words because you had to be here. Why? Because it's not about us. You had to be here because God was present last night, as he is today, as he always is when we gather together. But sometimes there's a sweetness. There's a different facet to God's character that he demonstrates at different particular times. Sometimes he's the lion of Judah, the roaring lion of Judah, the man of valor, the man of war. And other times, he's the lamb of God. And last night, he was the lover of our soul, the lifter of our head. He's so beautiful. You have to tiptoe when you're around him. When he's in that way, it was beautiful. It was liberating and free. And that's the experience we're going to have today in a different way perhaps, a different facet that God wants to show of himself. He's always good and he's always beautiful. If you take your seats, we give God the glory. We're going to have our time of offering. If staff, staff, do you have those photos? Layla was here last night with her camera. God bless Layla. And we've only got a few snaps to show and it doesn't do it justice because as I said it, it was the spirit that I'm alluding to not the food not whatever it was just the spirit of God and that's why we want to give him thanks and glory but we wanted to show you a few photos and then we're going to have our time of offering and praise God that God has a word in due season for us if you'd like to put the basket there and in then we'll go into our worship Don't I look glam with my new hair?
They do weddings, bar mitzvahs and funerals if you want to book them. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. It's true. <laughs> true. We've we become all things to all men. That's all right. Amen. So let's take our offering as we, uh, as we uh, move on with the service. And this is an extension of our, of our, uh, offer, uh, of our worship. Sorry. So Roboro, you'll be invited up and the details will be online for you for those at home. So be blessed as you give.
Let's pray. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can gather in this way in your house this morning. And we can only love you because you first loved us. We are so grateful. We pray for the word that will be ministered this day, Lord, that you soften our hearts, that we may see you as you truly are, that you bless Archbishop as he gives. We pray for our children, for the offering that your people have brought into your house. I thank you as Dominic began for every single one of our projects, Lord. And if you truly can use anything, I know that you can use us in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a clap of as Bishop comes to share. God bless you. Give a wave offering, offering to each other. Just acknowledge each other in the house. It's good to be here. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You're welcome. Amen. Pastor Patrick and First Lady, you're welcome. God bless you. And any other visitors today, first time or been coming along, you're truly blessed and welcome to be here with us. And also to acknowledge a blessing who we had the memorial of her husband last Sunday after the service. It was a, uh, it was a celebration of life, what he had achieved and the people that gathered and watching on the stream bear testimony to how he impacted their lives. So God bless you. We continually have you in our prayers and your family. And not to forget your son Ike, who a number of years ago also passed over prematurely to be with the Lord. So we, we, we send our love and prayers to you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed today? We've come for another week. And also just acknowledge last yesterday was an amazing time in ACC. I know there was a great testimonies taking place here. And if you were here, you were blessed to be here. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure that's one of many other events that the senior pastor will organize through the inspiration that, that the Lord gives her to enrich people's lives, especially the ladies who came last night. And also it's, it's a ripple effect. It's a domino effect because... The blessing continually flows because when you come and you feel you're filled with the spirit and your cup overflows, other people, even though they're not here, will benefit from that overflow. So we thank God on this day for what he's doing. Amen. Praise God. Today's uh, message is on prayer. You know, and the title will be, You Can Only Change Yourself. Yeah, we can only change ourselves. That's the thing. The key thing about prayer, often people want to pray for many different things or situations in their life, certain challenges that we have or certain experiences are not pleasant. We're praying for God to change those situations, but more than not, God will change us more than he changes things around us because God does not force himself of anyone in any way. And we see this, the testimony through the word of God when the Lord was ministering in Israel or Palestine, as many people know it, and he challenged many people to reflect on their lives and change their way of life. But what had happened, many people rejected him. Even he could not change the hearts. Oh, I wish I was speaking to someone. And we pray, Lord, change that person, Lord, change the situation. But what God actually does, he changes us within to help us deal with the challenges and adversities that we go through to strengthen us that we can overcome. And prayer is very important. It's a very important mechanism that we have to overcome and move forward. So I pray you take this journey today and see how you apply prayer in different situations to bring the outcomes that God wants for your life and not always the outcomes that we want. Yeah, praise God. If we go to um, Acts chapter 1, I just want to look at just see the, the benefits of prayer. When the disciples wanted to make a decision, they applied prayer as the element in that situation to bring about clarity. I wish to bring about clarity. If you want to be, if you want to be clear in the direction you're going in life, pray and God will help you, give you clarity, clear vision. Yeah, so Acts chapter 1, verse 20. I just want to read a few verses here just, just to move forward. When the disciples were going to decide on whom they'll add into the apostleship, because obviously if you know the narrative of the gospel, that when Judas betrayed Jesus Christ, he went and hanged himself, and there was a void, there was an empty space that needed to be filled to make the number 12 of the apostles. So what they had, what they had done, verse 24, sorry, verse 24, what they have done is pray beforehand for God to give them clarity, direction as to the decision they should make, who they should choose. 
And they prayed and said, O oh Lord, who knows the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen. See, it's not always obvious who's going to walk alongside of you. Not always the ones who have the credentials and, and the qualifications in the natural are the ones that you need or often need to walk with you. God needs to select your co-workers, the people move into your life. God needs to help you even help you choose your prayer partners in order to move forward. Because prayer can become gossip. It's how you, how you look, your outlook, what your information you're drawing, how you're using that information to move forward. Yeah? So they prayed, we're told, before they choose. There were two disciples, two disciples who were put there, and they chose, and they cast lots, and they gave the decision in the hands of God, something outside of their control. Yeah? So it was God's decision as to who will be added. And often we've got to give God the benefit of the doubt in our lives, say, Lord, show me the direction. Not always the obvious things happen that you expect. I might be speaking over people's heads today, but you're going to get make sense as we go through the message. So verse 25 says this. To take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place. So he said, to fill this place. And the lot fell on a, 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 a disciple called Matthias. The word Matthias means gift of God. And when you pray, you get the gifts of God. When you don't pray, you get the things of men. When you pray, God opens the door. When you, when you seek, when you talk about things in the world, you close the doors. Because God opens doors that no one can close and closes doors that no one can open. The wisdom is to know the door that God has opened for you. Yeah? And so when you're praying, things begin to happen. Yeah? But it's a personal thing because when God speaks directly to you, he doesn't speak to every nosy parker. You know, it says the nosy, you know, when, when people die, we're told that their life pl- flashes before their eyes. And nosy Parker, other people's lives flash before his eyes or her eyes. So when you pray, things happen. It's amazing that the, the Bible bears witness and evidence of this. So don't neglect prayer. Prayer is the fuel that will drive you to where you need to be, not where always you, you want to be. Look, when they were praying, the disciples were praying, they were, they were persecuted, they were, they, they, were, they were challenged, they were threatened, but they prayed. And prayer changes everything. We see in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, we're told this. It says, and when they had prayed, again the word pr- prayed here, we're told, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. If you want to shake foundations, pray. Please trust me on this one. When you're praying things to have, trust me on this one. If you know my history, you know where I've come through, you'd know, you would, you, you'll be amazed why I'm standing here today. But trust me on this one. Prayer is the, is the one thing that changes everything. Please. Yeah? You can have the whole nations come against you. When you pray, God will make that way. You may have a mountain that seems insurmountable. When you pray, you may not have to climb the mountain because God will remove the mountain. When you pray sometimes and they're facing the mountain, God might give you climbing boots and doesn't want you to remove the mountain. He wants to strengthen you to try to uh, climb to the pinnacle that when you're praying, you will be transformed. So to trust, trust, the, trust the mechanism of God, trust the word of God in that. Praise the Lord. And it's through prayer that we are receiving the Holy Spirit. That is, is the lifeline, is, 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 is the call that connects us to heaven. In Acts, again, chapter 8, verse 15, tells us this. Watch this. And when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. We're praying and the Holy Spirit moves in power. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, let me just go back a few, ver- a few chapters, tells us this. I want to emphasize the importance of prayer. We spoke about probability a few weeks ago. I want to speak about the importance of prayer. Praise the Lord. That we confirm that the word of God is not natural, it's supernatural. Yeah? And so in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, we're told this. this just follow this narrative, please. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Yeah? The, at the time of Pentecost was a celebration for Israel. Yeah? Of their fruitfulness. The physical fruitfulness. But God now wanted to do something spiritual about the situation. And verse 2 tells us this. 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Let me just go to verse 1 again to see the sequence and the process. They were all with one accord in one place. They were united. Where there's unity, there is power. Where there's division, we are disempowered. We are, we are weakened. We need to unite in power in prayer because that was a designated place that God directs them to be before they received the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem. I wish I'm speaking to welcome Archbishop Fringpong. Yeah, praise the Lord. And they were in the upper room. You're in a, look, you can look down, you're in upper room today. If you pray one accord, you may have this experience today. Hallelujah. Let, let's give God room to move in our lives, yeah? They're with one accord in one place, and in one accord, unity is power. Because God is unity. There's three persons in the Godhead, but united in one nature. We are different people, different personalities, different identity, but we can unite in our faith, and that's empowering, praise God. And verse 2 says this, and then something happens in that unity, something happens. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Everyone would be permeated by the presence of God. It's in the same way in 2 Chronicles when they were, when they were dedicating the temple. The, 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 the presence of God was felt so strong, so intense that they couldn't, they couldn't officiate because of the Shekinah glory presence of God in that place. And it changes everything. God wants to fill the physical house. He wants to fill your spiritual house. He wants to permanent. It says, it says it, the, the whole house where they were sitting was filled. Do you want your whole body, soul, and spirit to be filled with the presence of God? Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 3 says this. Then there appeared to them divine tongues as of fire. One sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with, one, with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now they were with one accord. They were in prayer. In one accord. And things happen when you're in prayer in unity. Power is released from on high. Praise God. It's like 2,400 volts cannot compare to when the Holy Spirit touches you. There's no comparison in the world to when the Holy Spirit touches you. You know that you know that you know that something supernatural has happened. You don't have to explain it. You just feel it and experience it. You can't explain it to people because people have to explain. Like Penny was saying, you had to be here last night at the woman's uh, meeting and celebration, whatever occasion it was that they were, they were working together with, or the conference, whatever it is. But you had to be here to experience the presence of that unity, that love, the flow, the sweet flow of the Holy Spirit in this place. Hallelujah. You can talk about it. You can read about it. It's a different thing to experience. If you're on a ship on the sea and there's a storm and you're going up and down the storm, if you're there, you know the feelings, you know the emotions. Some people feel seasickness. Some people don't travel well. Some people become fearful. But there's an emotion connected to that experience. But if I'm reading about it, I'm detached with their emotion and their experience. It's only head knowledge. But when you have the experience, it makes the difference. And I'm saying to you, trust me on this. Seek the Holy Spirit. Be in prayer and see the difference it will make in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then they begin to speak as the Holy Spirit gives them utterance. We more than not speak what we want to say. But when the Holy Spirit takes you, arrests you in the Spirit... You can be arrested in the Holy Spirit, but you get, it's consensual being arrested. God doesn't force that. And you open your mouth, and he puts his word in your mouth. He says, God inhabits the praises of his people. When we're praising him, then he'll, he'll speak through us. And he says, when God speaks something, things happen. When I speak something, nothing happens. Just go right to the beginning. Watch this, watch this. He says, I, I want, please, I want, to, I want to labor this for a moment because I want to enrich you. Peter said to the, to the man who was paralyzed, silver and gold I have none, but that which I have, in the name of Jesus, stand up and rise and be healed. And he was healed. He said, silver, I'm not giving you material things that are perishing and passing away. I'm giving you eternal, uh, eternal blessings that God will, abide, will hold you forever, eternity. That's what, we, that's what the pulpit gives to people. 
It's not the gospel, name it and claim it, brag, uh, uh, brag it and grab it. That's not the gospel we speak, speak about. We're speaking about uh, Yahweh Jireh, uh, Jireh, not Yahweh Jiro. You get that when you get home. Yeah? We're speaking about long-term, longevity, eternity with God. And you're just in a page, in a chapter of a book that has um, infinite chapters. So what were you were yesterday, you're not today. And what you're going to be tomorrow, if tomorrow comes, because tomorrow never seems to come, because always tomorrow becomes today. Watch this. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Watch this. I just want to take you back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. The, the Holy Spirit gave, as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance, the Holy Spirit was at the beginning. And when God speaks, if it's God speaking, there's creation taking place. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. You see, when God speaks through you, things change. When you speak from your own imagination, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Amen? So you go right back to, you let, let God use you as a vessel, a vehicle to speak through your lives. Things begin to change. You build things up, not destroy them. You bring peace, you don't bring trouble. You give love, not hate. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called sons of God, children of God. You know, if you're a troublemaker, what's the source you're drawing from? If you like to see conflict, what's the source you're drawing from? God is a peacemaker. God is a restorer. God is a builder, not a destroyer. He transforms. God transforms. God is the God of their gain. He gives us opportunity on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Every moment is an opportunity for great exploits to serve the purpose. Today, you can leave here and you say, what can I do to serve your purpose? What can I do to enrich my life and other people's life? What can I do to move forward, to overcome? Whatever you're going through, there's a solution to every problem in life, I'm telling you. You need to draw from the Holy Spirit to give you direction. As to where, how you're navigating this life. And it may not be the path that you've planned for yourself. You might want to go to the Bahamas, but God might take you to, to another continent. It's not your holiday destination. God will take you. Don't be put off by the gospel, please. Because if you planned your holidays, God will still bless you there as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit gives you utterance, you speak the things of God. Rather than, than disrespecting, you respect. Uh, you know, people curse a lot, use profanities. God will change your tongue, give you a new vocabulary. You know, people don't like the vocabulary of, of God. When people speak in tongues, they think they're just being gibberish or gone out of their minds. But that's a spiritual language. But they, they're comfortable in the presence of people who use profanities. Every other word is a swear. They're comfortable. But when you speak in tongues, oh my goodness. <laughs> speak profanities. Yeah, he's, he's my mate. <laughs> but speak things of God. Speak in the spirit as the spirit gives you utterance. In other tongues, people get offended. But it's in the Bible. God already recorded it for us to know it's not, it's not a fluke. It's not something weird. It's something spiritual. But people are more comfortable with worldly things than spiritual things. And let's just change our outlook to be seated in the heavenly place in Christ. Because when you're seated at the right hand of God the Father in Jesus Christ, as we're told by Paul in Ephesians, you're hearing this vocabulary in the spirit all the time. The apostle Paul says he was taken to the third heaven. He heard things that, that cannot be repeated in the world because you won't understand what's happening in that realm. We don't invent, we discover. What's already out there, praise God, hallelujah. Let me just come back to prayer, very important prayer. So we're told in, in 8, Acts 8.15, we're told this. And when they had come and down, prayed for them that they might be, receive the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that if you haven't had that, that, that experience, that you have it today. And even people watching the live stream. I pray that you have a, a supernatural experience. It's something different that you won't, you've never experienced before. Hallelujah. There's a delicacy in heaven that the world cannot experience outside of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that's your portion today. I give that to you. That's your portion today. It's on that one experience that's carried me for 34 years. That one, it was sufficed. 
You know, when you go on a meal, uh, Elijah was fed some bread. The ravens gave him bread, and he, 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 was, he, he had the energy, the nutrition to travel 40 days, Archbishop, on that meal. If you have the meal of bread of heaven... <laughs> You are a force to be, you're going to be going and going. The Duracell has nothing on you. Come on. Just on one, that one experience, it will knock you sideways, upside, inside out. You'll never be the same again. Some people say it's a bad thing, but I say it's a good thing. Praise God. So that we're praying that you might, if you haven't had that experience today, you'll have that experience with God. A supernatural experience, praise God, transforms everything. And then with that prayer, with prayer comes miracle. Miracles follow the prayer. But what, what, what the prerequisite for the prayer is, is, is surrender to God, desire him. Yeah, And so the disciples were with the Lord for three years in the wilderness, serving as waiters and as dustmen. But the key was prayer underpinned their ministry, their, 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 their journey. It was prayer because who's prayer? Christ was praying for them and he was teaching them to pray. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's work it, please. I, I'm, I'm emphasizing the importance of prayer because when they went to get Semini, okay, the Lord asked them to pray. And he went a distance from them and he knelt down and began to pray. But they fell asleep. And Jesus warned them of the importance of prayer. He says, pray lest you come into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray lest you come into temptation. And he prayed. And he asked his father. Sometimes prayer answered. Sometimes they're not answered. He said, Father, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. Because he couldn't understand the crucifixion event. Because it's not natural for God to die. God cannot die. God is immortal. It's impossible for someone with, without sin to die. He was sinless. He couldn't die. He couldn't understand the psychology of the mechanism of death. Because death only worked in sin. Because the wage of sin is death. He had no sin. He could trust, had to come to terms. I, I wish I'm speaking. With what he was going through as a man. Because he detached himself from his divine understanding. But being, he limited himself. I wish. If it's getting too deep for you, put your hand up. See, look. We have to go out of the building now. See? It's an alarm. Come on, stewards, please, everyone out. This is not set up. <laughs> this is not set up. No, it's not a set up. Please, make your way out. God bless you. We're going to come back to chapter two. The Holy Spirit. That was not set up, by the way, you know. It's, uh, it reminds us of that, you know, there's no guarantees in life. Things can happen unexpectedly without announcement. And in fact, that's how the Lord said he'll come in glory. He said there'll be two in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Two will be on the rooftop. One will be taken, one will be left. He'll come as a thief in the night. And no one would, unless you're prepared and waiting for him, you wouldn't know the time or hour and so forth. So just be ready in season, out of season, because no one knows what to expect, what the next moment brings. And let's just pray. Maybe God wants to take us out again. I don't know. This is spiritual exercise. <laughs> to remind us, stay vigilant, awake. The people on live stream don't know what the heck is going on. <laughs> but uh, welcome back uh, to our live streaming. It's good to have you. Uh, I just want to say, you know, it's important when we're coming to the Lord, we've got to be real about things. I asked Stavro to put something on the overhead very quickly. If you've got it, if you've got it, put it there. I want to show you something just to bring this metaphor to your mind. You see, here's a, a stream, a moving stream. Now, if I was to say to anyone, you're watching it on the screen. It's people watching it live, the message live stream. That message is going to be powerful for you as well. Don't worry. This is not a negativity or criticism. I'm just going to show you something about the relationship with God. You can observe. You can be observers. You can be watching this through your screen, through the media, technology, and so forth. But watching it doesn't mean you engage in it. If now, if someone is thirsty and they're watching this, you cannot come to the screen and draw that water and drink from it. It's there. It's an illusion. It's at a distance. It's not real. It's is uh, cyber, whatever it is, yeah? Okay, uh, so you can't quench it, and it's the same with God. 
Many people are distant from God. They're not really coming in to be saturated by the Spirit of God. And prayer is the vehicle that gets you there. Prayer is the vehicle that gives you a new. This is two dimensions. You see the screen, it's a technological world. And you see the, your physical world here. These two worlds can never mix. What happens is the same with the spiritual world and the human world. Those two worlds cannot mix unless only demonic powers can come in and trouble you and give you, and, and give you uh, anxiety and, and affect you. But the spiritual realm, the angelic world, cannot force it. There's a law that prohibits them without your consent and invitation to enter your lives. God cannot enter your life. He can invite you unless you open a door for him. And so if you want your spiritual thirst quenched, you have to open the door through the vehicle of prayer and let him in and engage and interact with him and give him control and the title deeds of the house that he's entering. I wish. Come on. Uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Watch this. It says this. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He doesn't break in. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief comes any, other, any which way can enter your life. You've got four doors in your life that the enemy can enter through. For, for, you know that. You've got four, five doors that the enemy can enter. You have five doors that the enemy uses as access point to enter your life. Do you know what they are? They are your five senses. Your touch, your seeing, your hearing, your smelling, and your tasting. He comes through all those different doorways to enter your life. The spiritual realm is in your heart. That the Lord invites you, invites you to open for him to enter to enthrone in your heart. Because when he's enthroned in your heart, all those five doorways become closed. Now what do we want? We like to touch things. We like to see things. We like to smell things. We like to taste things. We like to hear things. But we always... Tasting, touching, seeing, smelling, hearing the wrong things. And the world reinforces that. The billboards, all these things, desires. Come on, you've got to have this. You're not a real person if you don't have that. If you don't look like this, you haven't made it. If you don't eat these delicacies, you haven't tasted anything yet. <laughs> but you know what? Welcome. You're welcome, my dear brother. Come Praise the Lord. It's good to have you in the house. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we have to take responsibility for ourselves. Yeah. We have to take that responsibility for ourselves. And how do we do that? By engaging with the source that can change everything. I cannot change everything. God can change everything. I'm helpless. Here's my hope. Yeah. I'm hopeless. Here's my help. I'm helpless. Here's my strength. Yeah, and he helps us guide, navigate through life's journey, through his adversities, through challenges. He is the, the platform that we use to move on. He allows us to move on. And it's never too late. Prayer, prayer at any time could be activated and change everything. Even one minute to the 12th hour, things can change in your life when you activate the power of prayer. Because when prayer means surrendering, and when you surrender to God, God now is give you giving position, permission to step in. I wish I'm speaking to someone. You know, did you ever watch these wrestling matches? Uh, it, what is it? The American mess, or, or England wrestling matches where there's tag teams. Did you ever watch that? Yes. You've got the tag teams. They have to have a little rope and they, on each corner. Do you ever watch that? And they're wrestling. Sometimes one team gets one of the men and puts him in his corner. And they're pounding away at me at the corner. And the, his partner cannot get to him because he's got the cord and he cannot reach him. He has to touch his hand to activate his inter intervention in his situation. Did you ever see that wrestling? Yeah. And so he's wrestling. They're beating him up. And he's crawling. And it's all staged, obviously. He's uh, choreographed or whatever. But you, as a kid, you believe it. I remember Big Daddy and Haystack and Mick McMalice, who remembers them? <laughs> they looked like my friends who were going to the pub. <laughs> Haystack, who could hardly walk, but he was a, an icon in the, in the British. But when you see the American ones, finely chiseled men, you say, you comparison, you say, <laughs> you know? But they break sometimes for a split second. They break away and they attach him, and the hero jumps in. And that's what happens with God. The devil's got you in the corner pounding at you. You just got to get to the lifeline of Jesus. And when you break through, you touch the hem of his garment. 
the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, she was pounded by demonic powers. She said, I've got to get to that lifeline, the bloodstream of the hem of his garment, and things will change. I wish I'm speaking to someone. And she broke through the crowds. And she touched, and he said, bam, power flowed, and changed everything. And that's what prayer does. I can give you testimony and testimony of the power of prayer. And that's why I'm encouraging you. I'm giving you as a gift freely. This experience, this history, I'll give it to you freely. That things change in prayer. So the disciples were in the wilderness with the Lord for three years. Their training was not theological, but it was. Because theology of God is servitude. When they were choosing the disciples to serve the tables in Acts chapter 6 as waiters, that was theology. They had to be filled. The qualification was to be empowered with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, have wisdom and a good reputation. Theology to serve the tables as waiters. We get a little diploma and we think no one can talk to us. We're an authority on God. I, went to, I was interviewed by a Greek... and, I, and I, I'm just going to say a few things here. But I was interviewed uh, this week by a Greek um, organization that publishes about the separate people of the world. And I was in this particular place. And this individual came up to me and started challenging my belief systems. And I said to him, what, what's your problem? He was going on, going on. And I was trying to help him through things and just to help him understand the dialogue. But he wanted a monologue to speak at me. And I just, 20 years ago... <laughs> It would have been a different story. But uh, <laughs> 34 years ago, it would have been a different story. But, but now, uh, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit of God arrested me. And I just speak in the love of God to him. And I was just saying, look, you know, you don't understand. We're just talking. And what I'm saying was going on, going on. I said to him, listen, a few things. I said, first of all, you're void of love. Because you've come at me in a way which is offensive, disrespective, you're intimidating me, you're, you're, you're harassing me, you're violating my space. He had this little sign, I'm exempt from wearing a face mask, keep your distance, he was coming to my face. <laughs> and, and so I, we, we, we dealt with it, we just spoke to him, whatever. I'm saying is, is you've got to let the Holy Spirit, it's a prayer kind of thing, the Holy Spirit helps you give you an answer at the right time. You don't get emotionally caught up with that you just got to detach yourself from that but coming back to the disciples so the qualification of the disciples was servitude there were three years with the with the lord in the wilderness there were there were waiters yes they were serving people is that right you try getting churches to serve today it's more or less self-service isn't it there were dustmen you try getting people to clean up the church sometimes i'm not saying you because we're talking about other people now no i'm not because i know many of you are Lovely people and committed to all of you, I should say. I don't want to offend anyone today. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I'm saying, the point I'm trying to make is this, is that they, to, to come to a place of miracle is a relationship and a servitude to God yes. and an and a emptying of oneself and letting God fill you. And they do all these things for three years, serving the Lord in very difficult situations, the heat of the day, oftentimes, they were following the Lord in the wilderness when multitudes were around him and he was blessing the food. 5,000 men plus women and children blessed five loaves of fish and two, five loaves of bread and two fish, then four loaves of bread. And, 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 and he was just feeding the multitudes, seven loaves of bread and feeding the multitudes, whatever the case is. Yeah. Now, the disciples were drawing from this and that was, that's what facilitated their ministry and made them be who they would become. Miracle could not happen unless they were in a three-year university of the Holy Spirit where they were serving the Lord and serving the people. I wish I'm speaking to someone. And the underpinning that is our prayer and our relationship with God. And to the point where even Peter, after the Lord ascends into heaven and empowers them, even in his weaknesses, he's empowered by God to serve the purpose of God. And the outcome, the byproduct of that servitude is a miracle. Even, even, even his shadow healed people. And we go to Acts chapter 9 verse 40. When one disciple by the name of Tabitha has passed, died prematurely. And, the, and Peter, let me go from verse 39 very quickly to show you the power of prayer. And verse, then Peter rose and went with them. And when he had come, they brought him to the upper room. I said upper room. Things happen in upper rooms. 
Wow. There's a kind of theology that things happen in upper rooms. Things happen in high places. On Mount Sinai, Moses received the commandments. On Mount Tabor, Jesus was transfigured. Through prayer, Moses prayed, Jesus prayed. When he prayed, he was transfigured. His face shone like the countenance of the sun, I wish. So if you want to change and receive God's principles and statutes and commandments, just pray. If you want to change, just pray. The prayer will change you more than it will change everyone else. Yeah, watch this. So they went to the upper room. Amazing things happen in upper rooms. Pentecost took place in the upper room. Let me say something to you. You're, you're in a good place. You're in the upper room. And when we're praying, things will happen. Then Peter rose and went with them. And when he had, had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. They were, they were weeping sorrowful for the loss of their brother, sister in the Lord. Watch this, verse 40. But P Peter put them all out. You know, ho hopelessness has to come out of your life. For hope to be impacted. Yeah? Negativity has to come out of your life. Faithlessness must come out of your life. For faith to be empowered. Your faith to be empowered. The people around you will determine whether the miracle takes place or is a non-event. Whether the door opens or closes. It depends on the people around you. Stand in the gangway and stop you going out. Moving through the door of hope and potential in God. And prayed and turned to the body. He said. He took them all out. Before he prayed for Tabitha. Sometimes if the negativity around your lives. Sometimes just detach for a moment. And give yourself space. Give yourself room for God to work in your space. Don't let that space be filled by other people. Let that space be filled by God. And things happen. With you and God, I'm majority. When God is in the equation, all things are possible unto them who believe. And why did Peter do this? Because he saw their example with Jairus' daughter. When Jairus' daughter, 12 years old, had died, he was going to the house. And they said, do not trouble the master anymore, the teacher anymore. The, the, the child's gone. It's hopelessness. There's, no, there's nothing. nothing can, it's over. But when God, when it's over in the world, that's when God can begin. Yeah. Because there's always another chapter in God's infinite chapters of eternity. There's always another chapter. And there's always another beginning. And you can claim the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And there's a new beginning. The word of God breaks in at that new beginning for you, praise God. Watch this. And he cast, tells them all to leave the room. He says, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Watch this. But Peter put them, go back to verse 40, sorry. But Peter put them all out. And what did he do? He knelt down and he didn't bypass the process of prayer. We want an outcome, but we bypass the process. Yeah. Even Jesus at the, at the, at the tomb of Lazarus lifted his eyes and prayed to his father. We, got to, we must not neglect our prayer life. We become weakened if we neglect our prayer life. That's why Paul says pray without ceasing. Yeah, we continually pray. That's why Jesus said, pray lest you come into temptation. We need to kick in. We need to draw from that spiritual resource. The mechanism of prayer changes everything, gives us a breakthrough in serving the, the, the purpose of God. And she rose up. What, what did she do? Exactly. Peter applied the same formula that Jesus applied. There's formulas in the word of God. That if you, if you miss a detail out, you won't have the outcome. If you have a torch and it takes batteries, try turning the torch on without the batteries. It won't happen. There's, there's things that you need to do, elements that are required to make the torch work. You need the batteries. So if something's not happening in your spiritual journey, trace back, regress back and see, have I missed anything out? And if I have, I need to put that, that element in that place and I will have the outcome. Because the word of God is scientific. Peter used the same science Jesus used with, with, with Jairus' daughter. I wish I'm speaking to someone. What did he do? He took them all out. People had lack of faith. He knelt down. He prayed to God. There was a sequence of process. And when we overlook the process and neglect the sequence and the principles of God, it's a non-event. We will not have the outcome. And it's all connected to Deuteronomy chapter 28 about the blessings of God. If you obey, these blessings will come upon you. 
but we listen to everything else but the voice of God. Power in prayer. Watch this. Acts 13 verse 3. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Acts 13 verse 3. Watch this. Then having fasted and prayed. You see, there's another element involved to prayer. When you're not having the breakthrough, you've got to add something else to that equation. That's fasting. When the, when the man brought his son to Jesus, to, to Jesus' disciples to be healed, to be delivered from demonic uh, uh, possession, the disciples couldn't deliver him. And they t- he went to Jesus. Why can't, you know, your disciples cannot deliver my son? He says, all things are possible, he said to him, and to those who believe. If you believe, all things. If. If it's a small let word, but it has great implications. Yeah. At the time, historically, when Athenians went against Sparta, they sent one of the generals to Sparta, and he said to the Spartans, if we come into your city and we'll take over, we'll destroy, take you all captive, and we will bind you, we will kill all the men, and we'll take all the women as our prisoners and our slaves. And the Spartan replied and said to him, if. (laughs) It's a small word. But great implication, if. Amen. Praise God. And so he said, all things are possible, he said, if, if you believe. And then he said, this kind of demon does not come out apart from prayer and fasting. Now, this, this deliverance cannot happen. And there's prayer, we need to connect prayer. Prayer is not a diet. It's not about losing weight. Prayer is a... a abstaining from certain things to focus clearly finally tune to the spiritual realm to look out reflect meditate on spiritual realities and reflect on God a desire to see God a desire to hear from God a desire to serve God and it's detachment from all natural things around and it's not just a fast of food it's a fast from seeing things it's a fast of hearing things it's a fast of experience things it's just detachment and being in that space where God can move. I wish I'm speaking to someone. Yes. Important. Prayer and fasting. And so I laid hands on them and th- they sent them away. Sometimes you need to pray and fast for things to happen, to move blockages, to move strongholds. We need to pray and fast. But watch this. Verse 4, it says this. So being sent by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. That's interesting. Yeah. You visit me. I was born in Cyprus. I thought I, I thought I mentioned that. Kitim, the Apostle Paul went there. They beat him up, the poor man. The, the Greek, the ones in Baphos tied him up and whipped him. The, I don't even know the story. And Barnabas was from Cyprus. But, you know, God gives you a destination. The Holy Spirit will take you. You might not want to go to Cyprus. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you're going to go to places you didn't want to go to. You're going to experience things you've never experienced before. You're going to hear things you never heard before. When the Holy Spirit takes and takes and trying leads and holds the reins to guide you and lead you where, where the best place for you to be will make the difference, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's important. Prayer is a very important element in our spiritual makeup. In fact, the most it underpins everything, praise God. And when you think you've come to the end of everything, do not lose hope. Just pray. Prayer is a lifeline. David says in Psalm 40, he waited, 40 verse 1. He says, please just follow this very carefully. I was we finished this morning the message to encourage you about to keep your prayer life going. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. When he was crying, that's a form of prayer, a form of petition. And he heard this cry, waited patiently. It may not happen immediately, but it's going to happen. It's not if it happens, it's when it's going to happen. Because when you're praying and you're putting the right things in place, God has to move in relation to your prayer and intervene and changes everything. That your latter will be greater than your former. Because God is changing everything at this time. We've come to a place post-COVID-19 where God used that, that, again, that situation to get our attention. He said, look. You're not in control as you think you are. The world powers, they're not in control as they think they are. Yeah? And we're always governed by objective situations and control. We're always governed by this. That's why the Lord says, detach, do not become fearful. When you see these things happening, look up from whence your salvation comes. What we're doing is looking around. Con- conspiracies. Oh, this vaccine. Oh, that person. Oh, this. Forget about that. Look to the Lord. Who's the, who's the medicine for every vaccine and every venom? We had, the, we had in the Garden of Eden, Eve had the virus 
of the demonic venom of Satan's deception. The remedy for that venom was the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm putting it out there for people to watch it. Stop becoming fearful. Perfect love casts out fear. But how does, that, how does that reality come into our being? It's our relationship with, with love. Perfect love. Be in relationship with love. What's love? Love's not just an emotion, just a concept. Love is a person as well. For God is love. Come into love in God and do not be afraid of anything. Hallelujah. If the mechanism of the world wants to kill you, all right, it doesn't have to use a vaccine to do that. They can use any mechanism, and they don't even have to tell you about it. Trust God. No sooner we come out of, 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 of COVID, petrol crisis. We can't travel. Fuel yourselves. In, you, weren't, you weren't traveling 19 months. What's another few months not traveling? <laughs> You weren't able to even leave your house for 18 months. You can't. Now, what's the point? A few weeks waiting. Cues. People never buy petrol. Once buying petrol. Oh, there's a shortage. I know there's a shortage because Joe Blogger never puts petrol in the next car. It's queuing up in front of everyone else. <laughs> climate change. Let's have a conference for climate change. The icebergs are melting. We've got to deal with the fuel. <laughs> Prayer is the only thing that keeps us sustained. Because why? Because it's a direct communication with the Lord. When you call your friends on this little gadget and you're talking, you're, that's a prayer. But we need to listen more and speak less. Be quick to hear, slow to speak. What we do is speak at God. All the time, making demands. I want this. I want the other. Why is not this happen? Why? Just people say, thank you, Lord, for today. Amen. Let thy will be done. Jesus said, if possible, take this cup away from me. He didn't take the cup, but he released an angel. And the angel stepped in and strengthened him in that hour of need. And when you're praying to the Lord, God might not take the challenge because he can't change someone's heart. But he can send help to you to help navigate around the problem or over the problem or him remove the problem in his way but he will help you navigate through it we need to trust God's mechanisms we're too much tr trusting the world that is leading us nowhere we're trusting our friends leading us nowhere we're even trusting family who are going nowhere we're, we, we're even trusting ourselves we don't know we, we can't work ourselves out we can't see beyond our nose sometimes but God can do all things if you believe to those who believe. So let's just trust his mechanism. He'll change everything in his way. Praise God. Paul, I just want to give you give a few verses out for you very quickly. Paul says this. First of Thessalonians chapter 15, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Pray is an attitude, a mindset, a way of walking, being God-centered, Christ-centeredness, having the Son in the center of the universe, not ourselves in the center of our own universe, center of our own universe. And when it's come to the one minute to the twelfth hour, we need to appeal and apply to Jonah, who was in the belly of the well he thought it was all over but he said from the belly's well from the the sea creature's belly he prayed to the lord he thought the doors had closed there was no way forward god can open doors that no one can shut let me tell you this today that just pray will do more than you could ever imagine and think trust the mechanisms of god and see what god can do in your life put put that in place praise the lord just trust me on this and you see what the difference in your life will be let's stand together praise god Hallelujah. Before the alarm goes off again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll ask our Archbishop Fringpong to join me, if that's okay. Praise the Lord. If the message has spoken to you and it's encouraged you to really look deeper and lay hold of the hem of his garment and allow that power to flow through your life, just want you to bow your heads. Let's just bow our heads before our His Eminence to just lift in prayer now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And see what God can do.
God can do more than you can imagine and think. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let that word permeate us. The experiences of life come to our mind and become real. That God does want to move in a way in our lives as never before. He wants to bless you in a way you've never been blessed before. Believe me, God, God by nature is a blesser. He said to Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you. He's a blesser by nature. Hallelujah. And when we draw close to him and in prayer, we experience something that the world cannot give us. a supernatural strength, encouragement, uplifted. There's no, no element in the world can do that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Enough is enough for being thrown to and fro by the, 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 the circumstance of life, the, 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 the challenges of life. Time to just press forward and move forward with the hope that God has given us. As you bow your heads, whatever you have need, give it to the Lord. And people watching live from at home, don't just look at the stream on the screen. Connect to the stream. Make that stream of the flow of the Holy Spirit be a reality to you. Hallelujah. Touch that stream. Drink from that water that you will never thirst again. Be able to carry you for eternity. We thank the Lord. He has started a work in ACC. He has started a work in this church council. He started a work in all the ministries in the whole world. And he's more than able to bring it to fruition. Yes, Lord. He's more than able to yes, give you beyond Lord. what you need and what you yes. ask. He's more than able. Our God is able, praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your love. I thank you for every special person yes, in this building now and watching on live stream. And whoever we hear this recording, yes. uh, at the end of my voice, may they be blessed in your love, Lord. And break every chain, every yoke, every bondage that yes. has come to silk and destroy their love in you and in the world. Break it in Jesus' name now. As we release your anointing in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As the church would say, Amen. 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 Your eminence. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. 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 Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Invite the Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. Yes. yes. Yes, Lord. Let the hallelujah, your anointing mm. flow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, mm. Praise the Amen. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord the clap yes. offering. Praise God. Yes. Be Lord. blessed. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Yes. 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 And the message has come. By enable you to tap into the blessings. You have to, you have you need to have a focus. In Hebrew chapter 12 says, We have been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So let's lay aside. There are many people, even during the time of prayer, their minds are somewhere. Even coming to church, your body will be here, but your mind will never be here. So, say, we have been surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. And every day we are getting this blessing. Where are we depositing? What bank are we depositing it? So, let's lay aside every weight. You can come to the presence of God with all the weights. Many people come here carrying their loads. But here, he has purchased. The blood has been shed for you. Let's lay aside every sin and the weight. And let's run the race that is set before us. Jesus was looking towards the cross. And the same thing today, the message has come. And I encourage you to have a focus. Because the victory has been won. First Corinthians chapter 6, 20 says, we were bought with a price. The blood of Jesus has been shed for us. I thank God for each and every one. We thank God for the Archbishop for the message. Every day we come to the, the hospital to have the treatment. So I, when I come here, I come for treatment. So what are you doing here? You come here to get the treatment and the, 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 the consultant is here. He has made himself a vessel for him to be used. We thank God for life. And also, I want to thank God for my daughter, Atlanta. She was here, you know. She had a baby on, on Wednesday. And she's watching, watching us. They had Praise a fourth son. Congratulations. Fourth. We have had, already have twins, two boys, and the third one. Praise and Lord. we're expecting a late, but he got a boy. Amen. And the name is Anton Judah, the fourth child wow. of her in Atlanta. So I thank God. Praise for God. Her. We yes. send our love to her. And thank, praise. God. thank God. We give God the glory. Amen. Would Amen. You pray for the communion. Your Father in heaven, we thank you for the communion. And as we eat this bread and drink this wine, it becomes your body and your blood so that it can sanctify us, our life, and so that we will change and be good vessels Praise to the community. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whatever is represented in this cup, the blood and the body of our Lord. He's more than able to give life. We believe in what Jesus has done. Give life yes, and more Lord, abundance. Yes. Empower us in his love. So just we take it now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be blessed.
God bless you, everyone. I want to hand back to the senior pastor. To Corona Wash. I want to welcome Dr. Baba. Is it Baba? Am I, is that right? Pastor Oliver, you're welcome. From um, Christian, uh, what is it? Christian Wedgman of Zion. That's lovely. Praise the Lord. And also pa uh, uh, Pastor Patrick and First Lady. And anyone else, as I said, visiting you are more than welcome as a hand back to the senior pastor. God bless. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a clap off for today's message. Thank you, Archbishop. I was blessed by what was shared today and when you bring it back to basics and we believe that God uses this pulpit to speak to his people that's why we gather and actually what he said to us to sum it all up is just speak to me the message was about prayer and communication with God so what God is saying to his church please just speak to me come to me and we know the scripture that says, come to me when you labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Not like the world gives us. He wants us to come, that he'll give us his peace. He's speaking about prayer and fasting. And that it's not a diet. And it's so true. Because I've kidded myself over the years so many times, God, I'm going to fast. Help me to fast. And it reminds me, there's, there's, there's this caption that I read, and it says, um, brain cells die, skin cells die, hair cells die, but fat cells must have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, because they seem to have eternal life. <laughs> but this week, we are going to fast, <laughs> and we're going to unite our hearts together and know that God can make a way. We're going to conclude this morning as we begun. You made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over. You made a way. And we stand here to testify. I know that each one of you could come and stand where I'm standing. And I know without a shadow of doubt, you have a testimony and you have a song in your heart. But you just need to convince your spirit, your soul, when you're going through these dark times, to sing that song like Deborah sang. That was a victory chant. It isn't singing. It's a spiritual gift that God has given the church to sing that song, to learn to sing. It's painful to listen to two pieces of music at the same time. It's actually painful. You can't listen to the song of God if you're listening to the song of the world. Tune into the song of God and sing along with it. To listen to two pieces of music, you try singing two songs at the same time. It's impossible. So we need to choose the song we're singing. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. Because you move mountains and you cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracles. And there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here just because he made a way. Each one of you has a testimony. We prayed as a church for little Sophia. And we got a report this week that she's totally tumor-free and healed. And her doctors, the consultants, are saying it's a miracle because prayer has an effect. And there was a lot of prayer for Sophia all around the world from Australia. She lives in Australia. We were praying all around the world. And we want to thank God. So you made a way. God bless you.
Close of the grace this morning. You've been blessed. So be blessed this week and we'll see you next Sunday. So let's let's close the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us through the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you.